Now, I was halfway to the front door when I felt the barrel of a gun press against my side or whatever. And I heard somebody say, get back in the car. You know, real low like that in my ear. Make a sound and you're going to be dead before anybody can reach you. Now, a pizza box in my hands just felt like it was like heavy as some dang metal, man. I'm like, please, 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 whoever did it, Joe, don't do this, bro. Just take the keys in my pocket. You can have the car, whatever, man, just go. See, it's my baby, you know, it's my baby mama car, so, uh, <laughs> you know, hey, I read a deal, you know what, nah, I am about to say I read a deal with her than this guy with the pistol, but nah, at least he'd just shoot me and run off, yeah, I better not let her uh, little Nissan, her little Nissan uh, Altima get, get, get uh, stolen by this guy, but anyway, so instead, uh, the man dug the gun so sharp up in my ribs that, you know, I, I was getting ready to dang holler, man. So I turned and walked to the car, and he followed real close and uh, threatened to put a bullet in my brain if I tried to run. Now, by the time I climbed into the driver's seat, the, uh, you know, I, I, I sweated, man. My, my little piece of shirt just sweating everything, man. Now, for the next half hour, I'm driving at gunpoint. And my boss calling me over and over. Right up until the man threw my phone out the window. That mug still ringing, man. Now, look, this was getting too, this was just getting too personal, man. Like, you know, not only you messing with my job, you messing with my money, you messing with my girl car. Now you done threw my phone out the window. You know how many phone numbers I had in there? And, you know, I had secret phone numbers in there. You know, when I get a girl number, I got to put her under there as like a, you know, Chinese restaurant one and and uh and pizza 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 parlor two, you know. <laughs> That's my little code name. So when my girl gets the phone, she's like, Dang, why you be texting this Chinese restaurant so much? <laughs> so anyway. So he threw my dang phone out the window, man. He said, You believe in uh fate? And I'm too, you know, I'm like, okay, heck no, I'm not finna answer this question because, you know, if I say, yeah, I believe in fate, what if he say, well, it's my fate that I die today? And if I say, nah, I don't believe in fate, then what if he say I should die because I ain't got nothing to, you know, look forward to or whatever? So, you know, I just kept my mouth shut and he said, well, I do not. And, uh, it's like he ain't one really, you know, worried about me not saying nothing. And then he flashed like a smile. When he smiled, man, that junk kind of scared me. Because, you know, it's like, man, he must got some sick junk going on in his head. And he was like, you walked in my life at the perfect time. And I thought about telling him, you know, this is supposed to be my final night on this raggedy job. And um, this terrible, terrible job that every night felt like it was just going on forever. And I told him, I, I wanted to tell him that I wanted nothing more than to go home and crawl up in bed and never even look at another piece of pizza, man. But I figured that I only make him angry, so I kept my mouth shut and I'm just holding the steering wheel so tight that uh, my dang hands felt like they was finna go numb, man. And uh, finally, he told me to pull up into like this little quiet little area with a bunch of little houses and stuff. And he pointed me towards a gray house with an empty driveway. Still with this big stupid smile on his face, but the smile got a little bigger now. He said, we're going to wait for him to come home. Then you're going to take that pizza box and knock on the door. And when they open it and tell you that you ain't ordered, that they didn't order nothing, that's when I'm going to charge on in. I said, man, man like, what, what, you, you gonna hurt him? And his eyes got real tight and, uh, you know, just dangerous, man. This had a dangerous look on his face and my heart skipped a beat. He said, just do what I say. And then you can leave. Now, I ain't believe him. And time passed and, and that tomato sauce and garlic hit the car, you know, lit up. So we just sitting up in the car and all that time we sitting in the car that pizza got to smelling good and I heard his stomach growl like Rrr. and the first time he tried to act like it didn't growl I heard it again 
I said, you hungry, ain't you? <laughs> he like, yeah, you know, uh, I could use a bite. And he, uh, I, I mess around and slid that pizza back to him. I said, go ahead, man. You might well eat it. Since you just use it as a, something to, to rob the people. So he get the man going in, boy. So I guess since it's dark and, you know, he wasn't really paying no attention, man. He must have been allergic to uh, mushrooms or something, man. That piece of had anchovies on it, mushroom, all that nasty junk, man. So, you know, I guess that's what happened, man. You're so busy, you know, trying to trying to set people up, man. You ain't even took the time to see that, you know, this thing near poison pizza for him. But, you know, sure. We were straight, man, after that. I threw him up out the car. Then tried to hurry up and get back and find my cell phone so I can call... Um, Golden Panda Chinese food. <laughs> see, hurry up and get my girl her cop back before she, uh, you know, before she try to figure out where I'm at. You know, don't no monkey stop this show, baby. The show gots to go on. <laughs> <laughs>